welcome everyone to our YouTube channel and this is your teacher, I am Educado by Sir Arnold Ryan New Mercado. And this time, we're going to discuss another topic. And this is Lesson 8 in Understanding Culture, Society, and Politics. Our topic is all about social and political stratification. To know more regarding this topic, let's go and let's start this topic. Since this is the chapter 8, pag-usapan natin mabuti kung ano ba ang political stratification. The concept of political stratification, its meaning, definition, and explanation is referring to the division of large social groups into smaller groups based on categories determined by economics. Usually, ang pinagbatay dito yung economic status ng isang tao, ng isang pamilya, o ng isang grupo. Social stratification is a system by which a society is runs seven, category o'clock. of people in yeah. hierarchy. Ayan. So, yung kanyang kalagayan sa lipunan. Stratification is a trait of society. It persists over generations. It is universal but variable. And it also involves not just inequality but beliefs. So, pag-usapan natin kung ano ba talaga ang social stratification. On the other hand, social inclusion refers to the process by which individuals are cut off from full involvement in the wider circles of society. So this concept is excluding you in, the, in a group wherein tinatanggal lang kanila ng karapatan na maging bahagi ng kanilang grupo. And we have the different systems of stratification. So this picture is showing the capitalist system na nangyari sa Rome nung mga panahon ng middle ng enlightenment period we have the closed system it imposes rigid boundaries between social groups and limit interactions among members who belong to different social groups or occupy different levels in the society society hierarchy on the other hand open system is based on achievement allowing more flexibility in social roles increased social mobility and better interaction among social groups and classes. Para mas maintindihan natin, yung open system po kasi, nakafocus siya sa achievement ng isang tao o ng kanyang mga accomplishments. At ang kanyang paggalaw ay nakabatay sa kanyang mga rewards or achievements. Then, at the same time, yung equality is based on achievement. So, kapag marami kang narating sa buhay, matatamasal mo yung karapatan ng isang grupo na pwede mong kabilangan. So, that is open system. On the other hand, meron tayong closed system. Ito naman po yung status is determined at birth. So, kung mahirap ka nung bata ka, mahirap ka na hanggang paglaki mo, hanggang sa ikaw ay madedo. Or, at the end of your life, is still a poor. So, kung mayaman ka, Therefore, there's a great chance na ikaw ay maging mayaman. Usually, napapanood natin yan sa mga fairy tales. Social mobility is based on a person's social position. Ayan. So, kung mahirap ka talaga, mahirap na. That's it. Individual achievement is rewarded naman. Now, let's go with case system. Sa AP, ang tawag namin dyan ay sistema ang caste. Especially, yan ay nagaganap sa India. Pero nagaganap din naman yan sa buong mundo. K systems close stratification system because people are are unable to change their social standing. Like what I said earlier, that's it. Wala na pong iba pang dahilan para ikaw ay mag-move sa iyong society, sa, sa iyong social standings. It promotes belief in faith, destiny, and the will of the higher spiritual power than the promotion of individual freedom. So this picture is an example of case system in India na kung saan ang pinaka nasa ibabang posisyon ay ang pariya na sila yung mga outcasts or untouchables or children of God. Usually, sila yung sobrang hirap doon. We have also the sudras or the unskilled workers, vaisyas or the skilled traders, merchants and minor officials. We have also the shatriyas or the warriors and rulers at ang pinakamataas sila ay ang brahmin or the priest. Class system is a stratification system based on the ownership of resources and the individual's occupation or profession. 
class system also is based on social status on achievement rather than ascription and are thus more open in terms of social mobility. So, kanina yung case system, stuck na sila. That's it. Sa class system naman, ito ay nababatay sa meron kang resources or kayamanan or tinatamasang kagamitan. Especially, pati yung, yung trabaho at yung profesyon ay nagiging batayan para sa class system. Sa Pilipinas, class system tayo. Kasi, kung anong trabaho mo, medyo umaangat ka kasi you, you are gaining your income. ba? Diba? That's based on your occupation. And in the Philippines, we have the following five class system. Meron tayong lower-lower class. Ayan, sobrang hirap niyan. We also have the upper-lower. Ayan, yung medyo nakakaangat sa mahirap. We also have the lower middle class o yung sinasabi nating may kaya daw. Also, the upper middle class o ito yung mga talagang uh, masasabi nating may mga business na sila, stand-alone businesses. And the upper upper class, ito yung sobrang yaman talaga na hindi natin basta-basta ma-achieve kung tayo ay pinanganak talaga sa hirap. Kasi yung iba talaga, hindi natin, ma- hindi natin pwedeng itanggi na tayo ay bahagi pa rin ng case system na may pagka-class system. Now, many ways to change your social status. We have first the first concept of exogamous marriage. So, exogamous marriage, it's a marriage between people who come from different social class. Dalawang magkaibang lahi or dalawang magkaibang status sa buhay. Pwedeng mayaman yung babae, pwedeng mala- mahirap yung lalaki. Marriage between individuals, individuals which is only permitted outside of a social group. So, may mga society kasi na hindi rin pinapayagan ng exogamy. Cultures that follow this encourage marriage outside of the group unlike endogamy. Ayan. So, pag-usapan natin si endogamy. Si endogamous marriage naman or endogamy is the marriage between people from the same social class. Dapat mayaman sa mayaman, mahirap sa mahirap. Hindi pa pwede yung exogamous dito. Medyo common to, but these unions are not imposed and are entered into freely by the individual. So, ito minsan yung idea na pinagkakasundo pinagkakasundo yung dalawang uh, yung isang babae at isang lalaki kasi pareha silang mayaman for a certain purpose ginagawa yan dati pa ancient times that's it endogamy versus exogamy sa ngayon mas marami ang nagpa-practice ng ng exogamy kaya kung papansin dito sa ating balance mas mabigat yung exogamy kasi mas marami talaga siyang uh, nagpa-practice sa endogamy kasi benefits niyan, better relationship, same religious beliefs. Ayan. So, okay nga naman. Pero kasi sa exogamy naman, kaya ang benefits naman dyan, medyo mahirap naman din yung task. Ito po, itas natin yung screen ng camera natin. Benefits niya, build new relationships. Then, nakakaroon din ng different cultures sa different family. So, kung gusto mo na medyo experimental, you go with exogamy. But, if you want endogamy, so medyo traditional type po tayo. Sa Pilipinas, we are more on exogamy. Usually, di ba? Yung mga may kaya. Love kasi ang pinapairal natin dito. Sa endogamy, medyo family matters. Meritocracy is another system of stratification that that is determined by personal effort and merit. Dito, lahat ng efforts mo counted. So, kung ano man ang paghihirap mo, you can be promoted. Ayan. So, sa meritocracy society, there are two key values. Individual achievement, everyone achieves their status through their own efforts and abilities. It is not where you came from, but what you can do that gives your position in society. Sa Pilipinas, meron din tayong ganyang ideal system, yung meritocracy, na kung saan pinag-uusapan natin yung yung kayang gawin ng isang tao para ikakaangat niya. Example, may mga isang example niya, artista, di ba? Hindi sila nakapag-aral. Hindi sila nakapagtapos. Yung iba lang, ha? Pero, tinan nyo naman, ga- gaano sila kasikat today? That's a big factor. Kasi, impossible talaga na sumikat ka ng ganun. Dito sa Pilipinas, 
medyo ganyan ang ating ideas and principles. Also, the equal opportunity for every individual to achieve their full potential. Ayan. Society in miniature. School is an example of miniature version of wider society. Both are meristocratic. Kasi kapag marami kang achievements doon, talagang mag- marirecognize ka. Ay, magaling to, mag- matalino to, panlaban to sa korte, sa quiz beat. So, yung meritocracy talaga, it prepares life to be competitive and individualistic. Ayan. Sa trabaho, marami yan, di ba? Now, let's go with theoretical perspectives on social stratification. So, ano ba itong mga theories na to? First, in social stratification pa rin, can be examined using three different theoretical perspectives. Namely, functionalism, conflict theory, and symbolic interactionism. So, let's go and let's discuss each theory. Let's go with functionalism. According to Davis Moore's thesis, he introduced the Kings D. Davis and Wil- Wilbert Moore in 1945, proposed that a social role that has greater function, purpose, will result in greater reward. And stratification represents that inherently an equal value of different types of work. Therefore, sa functionalism, mas marami kang function, mas marami kang kayang gawin, mas mataas o mas mabilis ang iyong reward at mas mabilis ang iyong social mobility. Another, in 1953, Melvin Thumin proposed an alternative perspective on the significance of employment on social stratification. Of course, di ba? Kapag employed ka, marami kang kayang gawin. That's your function. Therefore, magkakaroon ka ng greater reward at mapapatas ang social mobility. Also, according to him, lack of opportunities for the less privileged sectors of societies. Oo oh, nga naman, kapag wala kang trabaho, wala kang reward. Functionalism sees society as being structured like a human body with many interrelated parts that function together to maintain a healthy body. Opo, tam- parang katawan lang ng tao ang sistema ng functionalism. Kapag ang kamay, napagana ng isang kamay, isang kamay, using our brain, function niya yun. So, napapagana niya yan. Therefore, in society, lahat ng mga agencies are interconnected to each other. Pero, they function as one. Therefore, to understand the education system, we must consider how it functions to contribute to the healthy maintenance of the whole social system. Now, let's go with conflict theory. Ito sa conflict theory, competition naman for scarce resources. So, talagang agawan, unahan, how the elite control the poor and weak. Ayan. Dito naman, makikita talaga kung paano nagagawang kontrol eh ng mayayaman o may, may, may mga kapangyarihan ang mahihina at mahihirap. Focus mainly on the negative, conflicted, and ever-changing nature of society. Sometimes, mayroong violent and non-violent competition. When two elements in society are in conflict, ayun. There has to be some resolution in this conflict. If both takes place, this is what makes society go forward. So, it's up to you if you will choose this kind of theory. Conflict theory takes a critical view of social stratification and considers society as benefiting only a small segment. The bourgeoisie or capitalists who own the factors of production such as resources, land, and businesses and the proletariat who are the workers that provide the manual labor needed to produce goods. So, dito kasi sa conflict theory, mas nakikinabang ang mayayaman o may mga businesses kasi nga naman, the proletariat or mga workers, sila lang ay nagwo-work para sa mayayaman. So, kinukuha naman nila yung kanilang sweldo kasi nga nag-work sila. So, that's it. Sa Pilipinas, medyo ganito ang sistema natin. Ayan. To understand between the two theories, ito yung pagkakaiba nila. Si functionalism, theory that states all aspects of society serve a function and are necessary for the survival of the society. Ayan. Sama ko sa Pilipinas, may ganyang konsepto. Sa conflict theory naman, theory that states there is a perpetual class conflict in society due to the an equal distribution of resources. Sa Pilipinas, medyo ganyan din. <coughs> Excuse me. States that all elements for the society are interdependent and they serve as a function for the overall stability of the society. Sa Pilipinas, meron, meron din ganyang idea. 
Let's go with conflict theory. Focuses on the concept of social inequality in the division of resources. Therefore, the conflict exists between classes will eventually trigger the social change. So, it's up to you. Ako, nakikita ko rin ng Pilipinas na ganyan din, na talagang nagkakaroon din ng inequality sa resources. So, it's up to us. Um, by the way, the pioneer functionalism is Emily Durkheim and conflict theory is Karl Marx. Let's go with symbolic interactionism. Ito medyo hiwalay ito ha, kasi yung dalawa halos common niya sa ibang lugar at sa bansa. But in symbolic interactionism, larger structural factors. Symbolic interactionism, symbolic meaning that people develop and rely upon the process of social interaction, subjective meanings that people impose on objects, events, and behaviors. Definition of the situation is what people use to... The time is 7.15 p.m. It's what people use to know what is expected of them and what's expected on others in a situation. Sa symbolic interactionism po, ito po yung nade-develop yung tao because of their social relationships sa iba't ibang tao. So, kung gusto mo umangat, medyo kailangan mo talaga maging madiskarte. So, medyo complicated din si symbolic interactionism. Also, we have the theory of conspicuous consumption refers to buying certain products to make a social statement about their status. Ito yung bibili ng bagong cellphone tapos ipopost niya sa Facebook pero hindi naman talaga siya mayaman. Or, nagda-download siya ng mga pictures na ito yung lunch nila then, sa reality hindi naman din totoo. Ito yung mga characteristics nila. Clear positioning. Time relation is the present. So, nakafocus lagi siya sa present niya. Able to take risks. So, wala siyang pakialam kung ano man ang sasabihin ng iba. He, he or she try new products. Kahit magastos bibili niya or tatry niya love symbols of status so mahal na mahal niya ang status niya then one status appreciation laging yung gusto hindi yung pangangailangan ng focus niya now let's go with social mobility kanina, kanina pa natin ito pinag-uusapan ano ba itong social mobility na ito social mobility is the ability of individuals or the groups to change their positions within a social stratification system ito yung kakayanan ng isang tao o grupo na mabago ang kanyang kalagay sa lipunan. Pwede kasing dalawa yan or tatlo. We have the upward mobility refers to an upward movement in social class. Usually kapag nakagraduate ka, that's a one step ahead para ikaw ay magkaroon ng upward mobility. So after graduation, what's next? You will seek a job. Then after seeking a job, you will do your best in your job. Then promotion. di ba? So, That's upward mobility. Sa Pilipinas, yan naman ang target natin eh. Para umangat sa kalagayang panlipunan mo sa lipunan na yan na ginagalawan mo. Yung downward mobility naman refers to the lowering of individual social class. Kabalik na siya ng upward mobility. Kasi po sa downward mobility, indicates that one loses his higher position and occupies a lower position. Ayan, medyo madalas din yan. We can take an example na kung saan ang isang engineer ay nag-occupy ng kanyang respectable position in the society because of his occupational position, education, and maybe case. Therefore, mataas ang position niya. Pero kapag gumawa siya ng mali, if he is caught for accepting bribe or suhol, or has committed a sin, or done something wrong, he may be sentenced to jail or members of his case may outcast him and as criminal or an outcast he may occupy a lower position ayan so pwede ka makulong pa nagkamali ka at kapag nakulong ka diretso kulungan so therefore hindi ka na engineer bumababa na yung tingin ng lipunan sa'yo yung social mobility mo hindi pa taas pa baba that's an example of downward mobility we have also the intragenerational mobility focuses on the experience of people who belong to the same generation. Ayan. So, ito naman yung karanasan ng mga tao na magkakasama sa isang generation. We have also the intergenerational mobility, different generation. Ito, para mas maintindihan natin. Sa intragenera- intragenerational mobility, <coughs> a change in an individual social status 
especially in the workforce, through some achievement over a relative short amount of time. Example, um, a lecturer in a pre-university college becoming a professor at the university after his doctoral degree. So, para ma-promote siya, nag-doctorate siya, then after, doc nag after niya mag-doctorate, nakagraduate siya, na-promote siya. So, therefore, sa buhay mo, sa generation mo, from being a lecturer, naging professor ka. So, that's it. Halimbawa, um, a person working as supervisor in a factory become assistant manager after getting promotion. So, isang example din yan na sinasabi natin intragenerational mobility. Nangyayari ang social mobility sa generation mo. Sa intergenerational mobility naman, ito naman yung hindi generation. Example, ikaw, bus driver ka or bus conductor ka. Tapos yung anak mo, dahil sa pagsisikap mo na pag-aral mo siya, yung anak mo naging isang presidente ng Pilipinas. Magkaibang generation. So, that's intergenerational mobility. <coughs> Now, let's go with social inequality. Medyo sensitive ang topic na to. Sa social inequality kasi, it may be expressed differently from society to society. But it's often seen in distinction in class, gender, religion, ethnicity, and age. <coughs> Usually, kapag social inequality, mas nakikita yan sa lipunan sa pamagitan ng iyong class, society, social class mo, religion, um, gender, pati edad, involved dyan. Ito isang example ng social inequality in connection with poverty. Ayan yung sinasabi nating social class. Tinan nyo po sa picture, yung mahirap na sa isang magulong place or squatters area. Pero kapag ikaw yung mayaman, nandun ko sa city, di ba? Status is defined as the esteem or social honor given to certain individuals or groups. Status po, mahalaga yan, yet that's a label. Status can be in the in different forms. It can fit in your society. Ascribe status, assign according to things outside your control. Ito po yung age, gender, etc. Ayan. Halimbawa, o, oh, yung mga matatanda doon. So, yun yung um, populasyon na matatanda. O, mga bata dito naman. So, that's out of control natin eh. Di ba? O, yung mga youth, youth, um, youth class. So, yan, dyan kayo. Sa achieve status naman, role you achieve through your own efforts. Halimbawa, occupation mo, college graduate, bat basketball player ka ba, wife, mother, earth. Sa Pilipinas, medyo ganito, no? Achieve status. O, mga artista, mga famous, um, ano na yung mga famous na yan? Famous class, artista, basketball player, mga nag-vlog, etc. Lahat yan bahagi na yung sinasabi natin. Achieve status. Master status naman, one rank that determines your social identity can change throughout life. Example, um, full-time mom ka, police officer, or grandparent, ay na talaga yung ito na talaga yung sinasabi nating status mo. Ito po, sa absolute poverty, ah, okay, ito po, sa poverty naman, marami tayong usapin dyan. Sa poverty po, meron tayong tatlong uri. Absolute poverty is a condition where household income is insufficient to afford basic necessities of life, food, shelter, clothing, criteria na change by economic growth. Kahit tumaas pa ang iyong resources is still mahirap pa pa rin. That's absolute poverty. Wala kang, wala kang kakayanan na bilhin ang iyong mga pangunahing pangangailangan. In relative po poverty naman, when household receive 50% less income than average median incomes, criteria, criteria will change with economic growth. Um, dito naman, ito yung relative poverty. Medyo ganito sa Pilipinas, yung idea na yan, na kung saan Kapag nababawasan ng iyong resources, automatically, medyo bumababa ang iyong social class. So, ano ka, downward mobility ka. Pero kapag medyo natatagdagan to, that's upward mobility. So, again, it can change your class based on your economic growth. So, in connection doon kanina sa status na natin, kailangan mo ng achieve status para ma-promote ka. Ayan, o, pwede rin yun. 
So, we also have the subject pro poverty, subjective poverty, actual income compared with income earner's expectation. Dito naman, pinag pinagkukumpara mo yung kinikita mo sa ina-expect mo. So, that's poverty. Alam ba, expectation mo, 10,000 per month, eh, 3,000 lang. So, subjective poverty. Now, let's go with gender inequality, another issue in the society. Gender refers to the culturally imposed characteristics that defines masculinity and femininity. Sex naman refers to biological and anatomical differences that distinguish male from females. Ito po yan. Um, sorry. Gender refers to the Gender roles refers to specific tasks and behaviors expected of a person by virtue of his or her sex. Balikan natin si gender. Yung gender kasi ito yung male, female. Minsan kasi, kapag lalaki ka pero pakiramdam mo, babae ka, sa puso isipan mo, that's gender. Kaya yung iba, nagkakaroon ng transformation. Kaya yung iba rin, naging member ng LGBTQIA plus society or lesbian, gay, bisexual, etc. Yung sex naman, refer to yung biological and anatomical differences. Kung meron pang female organ, meron kang male organ, automatically, babae, lalaki ka. Gender role naman, ito naman yung expected mo sa yung sarili. Ayan. Gender identity is another important concept which refers to how a person identifies himself or herself as belonging to a particular gender. Ayan po, tira nyo po. Sa gender identity, meron tayong gender queer. Yung gender queer po kasi, hindi mo alam kung ano ka ba talaga. Lalaki ka ba o babae ka. Tapos yung iba, nagiging man or woman. Sa gender expression naman, meron tayong androgynous. Sa gitna pa rin. Yung pwede kasing expression, masculine ka pero babae ka. Then feminine pero lalaki ka. Sa biological sex naman, Ito talaga yung male ka at female ka or boy and girl ka. Meron tayong intersex. Ito naman yung mga pinanganak talagang may dalawang organs. Sa sexual orientation, meron tayong tinatawag na bisexual. O pwede kang lalae, pwede kang babae. Meron tayong homosexual o yung nagkakaroon ka ng gusto sa kapwa mo ng babae, kung babae ka. Heterosexual naman, yung talagang nagugusta mo yung opposite na katulad mo. Ano ba, babae ka, ang gusto mo lalaki, ang lalaki ka, gusto mo babae. Patriarchy refers to the socially sanctioned and systematic domination of male over female. Ayan, so medyo dominant at mas nakakaangat ang lalaki sa lipunan kapag sinabing patriarchy. Dati naman eh, yun naman talaga. Pero ngayon medyo nabago na ang paliniwalang yan, equal na ang lahat ng lalaki at babae. Ito naman po yung feminism. Let's focus with blacks, black feminism or non-white women. Medyo kasi sila talaga yung until now, hindi na bibigyan ng maayos na pagtingin sa lipunan. Unlike in unlike in other Asian countries, sa bibigyan na tayo ng pagkakataon. Like in the Philippines, medyo ang babae mas nakakaangat na. Umaangat sila na magiging bahagi na sila ng elections. May mga bahagi na rin ng politics. May mga babae na rin employed or working. Ethnicity and racial issues. Ethnicity is the feeling of affinity or loyalty towards a particular population, cultural group, or territorial area. While race is a common ancestry. Halimbawa, kung ikaw ay Pilipino, Pilipino ka talaga. Kasi sa ethnicity naman, grupo-grupo yan sa isang lugar. Halimbawa, isa kang mangyan. So kung yun yung loyalty mo na mangyang ka talaga. Race versus ethnicity. Race is considered to be biological. Ayan. Pinanganak ka ng Pilipino, Pilipino ka. Ethnicity naman is considered to be cultural identity. Kung anong kultura nyo doon, ang tawag nyo sa sarili nyo, ganito, therefore, that's your ethnicity. Sa race naman, can sometimes be determined by the physical appearance. Ayan. So, pare-pare sa'yo ng physical structure, physical appearance, therefore, you are Filipinos can sometimes be determined by the manner of dressing ayan e, minsan kasi yan iba para para sa Pilipino sa buong Pilipinas tama pero kasi may mga regions tayo or places na ang suot lang ay tela so may tawag sa grupo nila that's ethnicity then 
in race, members of one race cannot join another race. Ayun. Sa ethnicity naman, members of one ethnicity can join another ethnicity. Ayun. They have the choice. Racism refers to a set of attitudes, beliefs, and practices used to justify superior treatment of one, radic one racial, racial or ethnic group and the inferior treatment of another racial or ethnic group. Ito, issue rin itong racism na ito. Ito yung pang-alipusta o pang-aapi ng isang lahi sa isang pang-lahi o pang-alipusta ng isang lahi sa isang ethnicity. Medyo common pa rin yan until now na dapat baguhin. Discrimination, ayan, connected siya sa racism, refers to actions or behavior of member of a dominant social group that negatively, again, discrimination negative yan, negatively impacts to the members of society that do not belong to dominant group. Usually, kalahin mo na, ka-race mo na, pero, mayroong discrimination. Halimbawa, ah, mataba, ayan, ah, hindi maganda yung tsura. Usually, ang kasama sa 7.30 p.m. Usually, kasi ang kasama sa discrimination ay yung mga, mga, may kapansanan. Discriminate sila. Ayan. Ang tawag sa kanila, other minorities, yung mga may kapansanan. Yung example yan is person with disability or PWDs. Ayan po yung mga picture nila. Another issue is yung global inequality. This may refer to economic differences between countries as well as medical care and education differences. Ayan ay involved naman kom comparing one country to another country na kung saan pinagubatayin talaga dyan yung literacy kapag mataas ang literacy, val uh, literacy improvement ng isang bansa there's a great chance na tumataas din ang kanyang economic growth. Global stratification refers to the unequal distribution of wealth, power, and prestige on a global basis, highlighting patterns of social inequality and resulting in people having vastly different lifestyles and opportunities both within and among the nations of the world. Isang example ng global stratification is yung first world country, second world country, third world country. Diba? Yung third world country, yung developing. Yung yung second world country develop yung first world super countries di ba konting trivia lang din meron din tayong tinatawag na fourth world countries today sila naman yung talagang outside sa isang society or mga ethnic groups na na talagang hindi nila tinatanggap ang mga modern ang modernization ayan speaking of modernization modernization theory is a theory believes that poverty can be eliminated by overcoming or adjusting cultural values like negative attitudes regarding work, tatanggalin daw yan para maging modernized tayo, limiting government intervention in economic affairs, ayan, and encouraging high rates of savings and investment. Kapag natuto tayo mag-save, therefore, at mag-invest, therefore, there's a great chance na magkaroon ng modernization and our social class and our so so social mobility ay magiging maganda. Another is yung dependency theory naman. Dependency theory claims that global poverty is the result of exploitation of poor countries by wealthy ones, thereby creating a cycle of dependence. Ito naman, sa dependency theory naman, nakadepende daw mahirap sa mayaman. Kaya kapag ikaw ay mahirap, expect mo daw na dependent ka sa mayaman. Iso rin naman, nangyayari talaga yan sa lipunan natin. Ang mga, maya, ang mga mahihirap, naghahanap ng trabaho. Sino may sino ang boss ng may, ng may trabaho? Di ba usually may kaya o mayaman? Therefore, dependency theory. Ayan, ito yung pagkakaiba nila. Oh. Modernization versus dependency. Uh, modernization theory assumes that all of the world was poor before the industrial revolution and that some nations were able to, to become rich. Ayan, sa example, United States of America, nagkaroon ng matinding industrial revolution na modernize sila. Modernization theory sees rich nations as a solution to the problem of poverty. Ayan. Ang nasabi rin naman na dapat tulungan ng mayayamang bansa, may hirap na bansa. Pero kasi sa dependency theory naman, assumes that today's poor countries were actually better off before colonialism drained them of their wealth. Ayan. Medyo hugot to kasi nga nagkaroon talaga ng colonization na kung saan yung mga nanakop na kinabang sila sa yaman ng mga sinakop nila. Dependency theory sees rich nations as the cause of global poverty. Ayan. Kasi nga, 
pagkatapos ng industrial revolution o pinakawalan na nila yung mga kolonyo nila nagkaroon na sila ng kalayaan pero kinamkam muna yung kanilang mga kayamanan so that's dependency theory kaya ngayon ang maghihirap na bansa nakadepende na lamang lagi sa mayayaman na bansa sana mabago yun alright do you want a copy of this powerpoint send a message to my email and like my facebook page I am Tocado And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am Elokano. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye, everyone.